What is up everyone? Welcome back to Great A's TV. And today I'm going to talk about the murder of Courtney Palmer. So let's get right into it. Tulsa homicide detectives say that they're just investigating a very disturbing lead. They think that a man who witnessed a shooting last month in South Tulsa is dead, and there are rumors that his body was fed to hogs. A developing story, Tulsa police believe a man they've been searching for who witnessed a shooting has been murdered. Fox 23 told you last month when TPD was looking for Courtney Palmer. Now, Fox 23's Lynn Casey joins us live with a bizarre lead in this case. Detectives are now investigating. We believe he's dead. Sergeant Dave Walker says since we first told you they were looking for Courtney Palmer, police served a search warrant at a North Tulsa apartment that revealed physical evidence of a torture and beating. And the beating was of such and of a manner that lasted so long that, that he couldn't survive. So Courtney Palmer was last seen on November 10th of 2016. Unfortunately, on December 15th of that same year, after receiving a tip that Gerald Lowe, a suspect in Courtney Palmer's disappearance was seen in Muskegee, Oklahoma. Tulsa police actually found a body, a badly burned body, in a shallow grave. And that body did actually end up being identified as Courtney Palmer. And a later coroner report actually showed that several of Palmer's facial bones were broken, as well as a couple of his ribs. And it was also noted that his body was in an advanced state of decomposition. Now, once the Tulsa police actually recovered Courtney's body, they had a pretty good suspicion that Gerald Lowe had something to do with it. And the Tulsa police caught a really big break in the case they were building against Gerald Lowe when they found, when they ran tests on DNA found in a sock that was in a house very close to where the burial site was located. And the DNA later matched to Gerald Lowe and another suspect in the case, Michaela Riddle. And it's actually theorized that Lowe and Riddle, who were in a relationship at the time, had sex on a bed and then used that same bed to cover Courtney's body when they set it on fire and burned it. And they burned both of them. And that theory supported because in the burial site around the body they found mattress springs. And in light of that evidence, Tulsa police actually arrested Gerald Lowe and Michaela Riddle. And they were charged with first degree murder in the death of 23 year old Courtney Palmer. And Charlita Mack, who I'm going to talk about later, was charged with accessory to murder because a lot of the assault that happened to Courtney Palmer happened in her house and she actually didn't tell police at the time. She didn't report that anything had happened to him. Lowe and Riddle were also charged with kidnapping, desecration of a body, and committing a gang-related offense. And at the time, police actually theorized that the reason Palmer was attacked initially is because he was seen talking to a detective the day before on a shooting that happened in that neighborhood. And later on, Lowe and Riddle actually admitted that they initially attacked and killed Courtney Palmer because they believed he set up the person who was shot that day, Carl Harris. Even though Harris, who was hospitalized for about six weeks due to his gunshot wounds, later stated that he didn't believe Courtney Palmer had anything to do with his shooting. Now, Charlita Mack, who, like I said, lived in the home where Courtney Palmer was initially beaten, actually told investigators, they strangled him in my hallway and stomped on him till he couldn't breathe anymore. And in a cross-examination with one of Riddle's attorneys, Mack actually admitted to initially trying to cover up the crime. Janita Thomas, another witness to the crime, says she saw Lowe and Riddle attack Palmer in the bathroom before she and Riddle briefly left to buy four bags of ice at a nearby convenience store. And she said that she didn't initially know what the bags of ice were going to be used for, but that later on she saw Palmer lying in ice in a bathtub after he got beaten. It's also noted that she teared up as she was telling the attorneys that she actually left Palmer and went to another room in the house when she saw that there was blood coming from his face. And when Lowe and Riddle actually accused Palmer of setting up Carl Harris, both her and Palmer actually told them multiple times that he had nothing to do with it, but they didn't believe him. Thomas also said that later on she saw Palmer laying down in the hallway with a blue dryer sheet bag over his head while he was being stomped and choked. She also said that before Palmer was taken into the hallway, Riddle actually poured boiling hot water on his head, which from what I've read, he was alive through all of this. And that is just, it's insane the amount of torture they put this man through for something he didn't do that they accused him of that he didn't do in the first place. And it just, it doesn't, no matter how many cases I do, I'll never understand why people are willing to do such horrible things to someone else. It, it, it doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. They beat this man up, they torture him, they pour boiling water on him. Eventually, 
they set his body on fire. Hopefully he was dead at that point because they think he set up someone. And it turns out he didn't even do that. Like it just, it doesn't make any sense. And Thomas's boyfriend, James Barkins, actually stated that he saw Riddle hitting Palmer with sticks while he was sitting in the bathtub and that he was actually screaming at this point. So now you have three different people who were in the house who didn't, weren't involved with actually torturing and beating Palmer, but they saw this happening and they didn't, they didn't report it to the police. Why? He also said that he heard Riddle tell Palmer he ain't from Hoover and that he had her effed up. Now that's all the information we have on what actually happened to Courtney Palmer that day on November 10th of 2016. But the actual trial for Gerald Lowe and Michaela Riddle isn't scheduled to start until November of this year, 2019. But it is believed that both of them will get a life sentence for what they did. The prosecution was actually initially pushing for the death penalty but for some reason or another, that, that actual uh, sentence was taken off the table and now they're just pushing for a life sentence for both of them. And if you want more information on this case, of course I'm gonna leave links to uh, the articles that I used for my information in the description down below. But there was also a First 48, a two-part First 48 series done on this case. And I don't know the actual names of the case, of the, uh, of the episodes, but I'll find out and I'll, if I can find out, I'll put them over here somewhere so you guys can check that out if you actually want to watch that but that that is the end of this video that's all I have to say about this case um, well that's not all I have to say like I've stated throughout this video I I'll never understand why people are willing to do something like this to another human being I think both of them deserve life sentences I know that Charlita is go to trial for accessory to the murder I don't I believe they had charges for Thomas as well but they dropped those charges and they're just gonna use her as a witness instead honestly if it was up to me I think that everyone involved deserves some type of prison sentence just because you you're in that room I don't care if you didn't have anything to do with the actual murder or the actual beating physical beating of Courtney Palmer but you could have called the police at any point and you decided not to and I get it you could argue that maybe they feared for their lives as well but from what I've read in these articles it, it seems like they never really had any fear that they were gonna be beat up or anything like that so they they could have easily just got away and called the police I'll never understand how you could let that happen to someone in your house it's not even their house it's your house and they're beating this man up they're beating him to death and you're just letting it happen I, I don't it's it's a shame I mean at the end of the day Courtney Palmer he died for no reason he was killed tortured put through horrible things for no reason at all for false accusations and there's no matter what happens to these people no matter what charges they get if they get life or whatever that's not gonna bring Courtney Palmer back so let me know what you guys think about this make sure to like comment subscribe do all those great things and until next time, I hope you guys have a great day, great month, great year, and uh, I'll catch you next video.